Yet with you I told you these things. And now you know which withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So we are to... We are to push and hold back. We have the Holy Ghost. Remember, he that is in us is greater than he is in the world. We are to, as long as we're here, we're to push hard back against the Antichrist system. Not give up any ground at all, folks. So those are the three commissions that God has given us to do. And then, regardless of who wins the White House, we are, again, we are in this great apostasy. We have no lack of knowledge concerning things to come. Right? Is there anybody in here that has any lack of knowledge? It's actually spelled out literally for us in the Bible. So we're prepared, aren't we? Amen. Amen. We're not the children of the night that we should be caught asleep and unawares. We know full well that this is the evil day and soon all the world will hate us. The great horror, the apostate church will uh, lead the fight against us. Yep. The Antichrist will have temporary victory over us. The persecution that the church is under now throughout the world, folks, believe me, the vast majority of the, the body of Jesus Christ is under severe persecution, greater than it's ever been. Yeah. And it's not even newsworthy for NBC, ABC, or CBS. Turn to Daniel chapter 7. And in Daniel chapter 7, we read this. And this is talking about, starting in verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. This is the Antichrist, which shall diverse, be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and it shall tread it down and break it into pieces. And the ten horns of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Now all of these things have taken place already. And another shall rise after him, and he shall be diverse from the first, and shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words. Well, the Antichrist is yet to come. The spirit of the Antichrist has been here. It was in Nero Caesar. It was in a number. And he shall speak great words against, and I believe the Antichrist is here right now. He shall speak great words against the Most High, shall wear out the saints of the Most High. How many of you felt that you've kind of been a little bit worn out by abomination? Believe me, I hear from people all the time uh, telling me they're just, they're just frustrated. And think to change the times and the laws. Have we seen abomination trying to change the times and the laws? The word their times means the customs. Yeah. Something like, remember, for 6,000 years, marriage was between what? A man and a woman? Right? The laws, up until recently, there were laws against sodomy and pedophilia. People went to prison for that kind of thing. But they promote it today. Even treason has been legalized by abomination, this man of great sin. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of times. That's during the tribulation period. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away the dominion to consume and destroy it to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of his kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High whose kingdom is everlasting, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. You see, folks, we win in the end. Amen. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cognitations much troubled me. 
And my cotton has changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. And then, in conclusion, I want to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And we go to 3 first. Verses 1 through 5. And the message here is pretty clear that we, we, we pray for God's protections as all of us preach His Word. Finally, my brother, pray for us that the Word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. And then I want to take you to uh, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 10. Now, this passage of Scripture here can be very effective in uh, bringing the lost heathen to repentance, that we can get them to read, and then just ask them what you think of, that it means. Starting in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, which is manifest token of the righteousness judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. Seeing as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, let rest with us, when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. And that's the end of my Election Day message. I think now we'll take the Lord's table.